below a quorum. Okay. So, but maybe uh, would it be okay before we figure out what's going on and maybe let the play finish? I would love to hear what's going on with um, with the administrative team, just to kind of give us a, a so quick rundown. Tell me kind of how they're ending the year. Yeah. How are you ending your year? Apart from with great joy and happiness, <laughs> I hope. Busy. I know at Callis we are so um, like fast paced. We have sixth grade trip coming up in the coming week. It, it, there's a lot of culminating activities. Um, we have the PIP project, personal PIP projects happening in the third and fourth grade. The ideas that some of those kiddos have come up with that they are passionate about and want to research. I'm learning about some Japanese artist who does anime. I've never heard of them before. Um, spiders. There's a weird spider that's become a theme. Kids are fighting over who gets to pick which project. Nicely. <laughs> um, what else is happening at Callis? Um, I'm sure I'm not the only school that has a lot happening at this time of year. Um, we have our art walk and concert coming up in another week. Love to see you all come out for that. And field days is always fun if it would warm up and the black flies would stop in Calais. Yeah. <laughs> field days would be great. Good. Come and carry some water around our field. That would be great. And, and splash it on a teacher? Yeah, or not me because I would have ruined my hair spray. Oh, right. But um, yeah, <laughs> everybody else. Everybody else is good. I think one thing that's been in our favor being in school is the weather because spring fever oh, hasn't yeah. really mm -hmm. kicked in yet. Oh, yeah. So it really hasn't heated. Right, so that has been very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, and yes, we're very busy. Mm -hmm. Are you getting any sort of um, expressions of, of not disgruntlement, but um, grousing about the long school year? Or is it helping? It, does that bit. help? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But yeah, it, it, it helps, helps to not have too many nice days. Yeah. So they don't notice that we're actually in early June. Yeah. Yeah. I think Alicia, one of the things I was said to I was asked that a couple of weeks ago, and I said to somebody, they said, "When do you lose instructional effectiveness towards the end of the school year?" And, I, and they asked people for a date. And I, in my mind, it's never a date; it's yeah. when the weather shifts. It's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even one really nice, warm, beautiful day makes yeah. it tricky. They want to be outside, running around. Yeah. And we haven't had much of that, so I feel like we haven't really lost them or the momentum for learning yet. <laughs> so that's a plus. So Get ready for a downturn. I just heard the weather that when I came in that after tomorrow we're on a warm upward up. shift. Yeah, I saw Warm that. and sunny for like five or six days in a row. I'll believe it when it happens. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we do need a little of that, yes. otherwise we can't get on the field for graduation because it's a sponge right now. Yes, it is. So uh, we're, we're worried about that. But if we get some little bit of breeze, a little bit of sun, we'll be good for that. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't even think I can list everything that's happening between right now and next Friday when we graduate. So it's just a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, we're still we're still seeing good learning going on in the building. Like there's some really fun stuff that's, that we're seeing kids do, and you know, the teachers doing. Got the eighth graders on the trip right now, so, so uh, that you know, that relieves the middle school of some pressure here at the end of the year. It's always a good good let up, and then move up day. We were just saying next this, Tuesday. Yeah, to next mm -hmm. Tuesday. So that will be all of our sixth graders coming up for the day to wow. experience uh, new 32. And, uh, and all the other kids experiencing their schedule for next year. So that'll be fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, Donnie nice. scored the cover of the Times yeah. Argus yesterday. <laughs> um, that was, thanks Dave. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but we, we just, we did our off school play last week and it's, it's awesome. Um, I, I really love it, the kids love it. The whole community loves it. You know, it's a fully custom uh, production with songs written by the kids uh, and um, you know local community volunteers just come in and create a play for us uh, with us um, and it's and it's really fun and, and the the group of volunteers that we have working on the play right now are really 
focused on making it more a, a more student driven production um, it has some elements of, of the students voice in it but they really want more and our literacy specialist I think next year is going to try and you know writing workshop the script um, uh, a, a little bit more so it, it's just it's really great um, and we so that was Thursday night and then Friday we really <laughs> um, uh, put the pedal to the metal and did an, an all-school hike in the morning um, and then by by Friday afternoon things are pretty mellow <laughs> <laughs> um, which was great and, and we, we really are kind of focusing right now on just wrapping up the end of the year trying to get uh, you know capture our assessment data that we need to at, at the end of the year you know, these two weeks um, and then we go into exploratories where kids can choose some activities those final three days of school and uh, it's just it's a fun time and um, fun way to spend the end of the year. That's great. So you kind of ease them out that way. We do. Yeah. That's great. So for Berlin, similarly, you know, uh, a lot of end of the year activities. Of course, like. we have our <laughs> production right tonight. Which, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're finishing up. Um, it, it, you know, we had the uh, daytime performance today, and it's just an amazing job that the kids and the parents helping did. Um, um, yeah, just starting to wrap up the year. We have a, a end of the year picnic that the PTNA puts on. Um, so that's always exciting, getting ready for sixth grade graduation. Um, one of the things that I shared with students and staff um, is <clears throat> this idea of finishing strong. And I relate it to a basketball coach I had in high school <laughs> and uh, kind of tell the story around you know, persevering to the end. So in light of a longer end of the year, um, just this idea of not coasting the last week of school and just kind of kicking back, you know, keeping the routine, you know, doing your best to the to the bitter end, and just kind of <laughs> inspiring that in the kids and to help with some teacher sanity, I think too. So um, that's a, a message we've been trying to communicate to everybody. So. Do you, do you all have a lot of turnover yeah. among your teachers? From mm -hmm. This is one of the lowest years by far. Really? It's not easy. We listed it today at Central Office. And I think it's up to 10 people overall. Yeah, all of the horse. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And several of them were retirements for us. So mm -hmm. they're, yeah. And we don't have any at East Lake Area. Yeah. We have one retirement at Calvert's. And that's good. So people are not, are not voting for the exits. <laughs> okay, that's okay. good. No. no, we have good places to work. I mean, we're seeing that, that people are choosing to be with us. Mm -hmm. not to, and so, uh, I mean, I think for us, we've had three, we have three retirements. One person whose spouse was relocated out of state. And, uh, and so those are the kinds of things we're experiencing. They're not people that are finding other jobs in the state. So, and that's, in fact, I don't know any of my people that are leaving because they are moving to another school system in the state. Currently, the boards will need to approve some on the 17th for hires, um, but past my interview or past the HR process, so we're ready for the board, and including um, certified staff and non-certified staff, which the board doesn't need to approve the non-certified. Um, I think we had five or six, I'm looking at Lori, Kelly, and Jen, because we were talking about this day. We're down to like five or six out of you know, about an uh, employee full-time equivalent workforce of about 329 people mm. that's open right now. So that's re that's the smallest by far. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know if um, Floor or Jonas or Dorothy or Vera, do you have any questions? Uh, I know you know what's going on in your own schools, uh, sort of own town schools, but I don't know if you have questions for other schools or... What are the end of year assessments that you do? Because I imagine that's not just it. Yeah. 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 We're thinking we need to take stock of uh, our assessment plan again. We've um, we've been doing a lot of end of year assessment. We um, we do Star 360, which is a universal screener, and we this year chose to try that four times a year. 
in reading and math because last year we had the experience, um, a number of our teachers told us that the gap between December and June was too much, so we snuck in another one in March. So we're wrapping that up. There are end of the year literacy assessments that we are doing for students, especially students who had not yet met the standard in the winter. Uh, we just completed the Smart Balanced in grades three through nine. Uh, that was done at U32 prior to April break, but the elementaries did that in the month of May. The statewide science assessment is a May administration. That's grades five, eight, and 11. The fitness gram is now a statewide PE assessment in grades four, seven, and 11, also mostly done in May, end of April, uh, beginning of May. Um, we have students who've taken college entrance exams. That's outside of school, but that's still part of the time. And students who took AP courses and decided to take the advanced placement exam. Um, what am I missing? I think that's a good list. But the um, yeah, the the Star 360 is low invasive, uh, computer based, 15, 20 minutes. Um, Students in grades three through six, seven, eight, For nine, and ten. Three through three ten, ten. In, <laughs> in, in, in literacy, um, and one through ten in math. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and, and we can use it as a screening tool, but also a progress monitoring tool. So if a student is below the benchmark on one assessment, or on, on one um, win in one window, you know, they can take it again a month later to see if they've made that, that incremental growth. And it's a, a really powerful tool for us um, to get some, you know, some, some more real time information because as soon as a student hits done, I can pull it up on right. my end and see how they did. Is, is that required or is that something you do no, on your own to do that? Star 360 we've chosen to do. Where's that data? I mean, where's the data from all of that sort of constellation? Of so those, the data is housed in our information system. It's something that we share with the boards at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. I would love to see previous examples of that, just so I know what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. I think some of those slide shows are probably Yeah, October yeah. Yeah. I October, the October yeah. SU meeting. SU meeting. Um, yeah. So, Jen, you said that the teachers felt that the period was too long between December and June. Um, they're they're actually using these assessments themselves to, to kind of keep track of of how things are going. Mm -hmm. We use them to put kids into uh, some of the interventions that we have. Uh, callback, which U32 is a block of time where kids can go work with an individual teacher in small groups. Um, so that's how they, they use that data to kind of schedule kids into the callbacks, uh, particularly at the middle school level, so that they can uh, catch up on some skills. And the, the STAR program can generate a seemingly infinite number of reports. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so it can, and where we use it, where a lot of our teachers use it is uh, at the classroom level, is they can you know, um, you know, pull a report for a standard and, and find students who were at various levels of achievement for a single standard, you know, say counting to 10. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so can make instructional groups based on, on that information. Uh, and, it, it, and when, you know, when used well, it's an incredibly powerful tool. It's not just a, a tool that we look at and say, okay, X number of kids met the benchmark, X number of kids didn't, Let's wait till <laughs> the next, uh, you know, the next window. We're using it constantly, you know, to get uh, uh, different bits of information. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that sounds like sort of a model of how metrics should be used, I mean, as by the people who are actually doing the teaching, and um, and not just to generate reports for school boards, <laughs> yeah, to, um, to satisfy our, you know, insatiable curiosity. Yeah, it, it, it's it's an instructional tool for sure. sure. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that translation of data of the three system and the kid talk that you'll be doing in June too? How do you, because it helps them set goals for individual students? 
<laughs> so at the beginning of the year, those of you who are on the board saw the, the goal setting that our teachers did. They used the STAR data in the fall to kind of, there, there is a measure in the STAR data that kind of predicts students' growth over a year. Those students who should make a year's worth of growth, maybe those who aren't. And as Matt and Stephen were saying, we use that information to help guide our instruction make groupings, think about interventions. Um, so one thing, and I don't, I'm not sure if, how much the other schools have focused on it, but we've gone deeper with the data um, this year at East Montpelier and triangulated it, so not just looking at one measure, but comparing maybe SBAC assessments to the reading assessments to the STAR reading assessment to teacher judgment. So we're using multiple methods in kind of comparing and saying, does this does this make sense? Does this confirm what we know about the student? Is Are there any red flags? The nice thing about STAR, and we've done this a number of times, kids can have bad days, right? So they could take, take an assessment and totally bomb it. And if it doesn't look like kind of what their profile is showing, like, you know what? This doesn't make sense. We might meet with a student. We actually just did it the other day with a um, with a student whose whose star score didn't kind of match what the teacher was seeing or match the recent SBAC um, assessment, and sat with the student and said, you know, was this your best? How were you feeling? No, I kind of just you know didn't didn't give it my best. Um, let's try it again. And then we'll look at that data again and say, yeah, this actually does confirm what I'm seeing in the classroom. Um, so what we're going to be doing next next Wednesday afternoon, actually, um, as a whole staff is looking at the SBAC data from the spring and the reading data and the report card data and kind of comparing, you know, does this do all of these measures kind of, are they aligned and do they make sense yeah. for each of our students? That's great. George can join us in about 20 minutes. He needs to do a few more things. Uh, in about 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, this, um, thanks for that. <laughs> Can I just point something out? Um, yeah. And uh, Maple Run Board, I've been with twice since uh, accepting a position with them. What they, they just call this principal voices, where the principals don't give reports, but they kind of give updates. So you got a little more detailed questions as you got into the assessment, but just kind of like what's going on. Yeah. What the highlights. Yeah, I like this. So, I mean, you know, you can think about that as you think about the meeting. I just wanted to point that out directly as you think because we're talking about meeting protocols. Mm -hmm. and then how that I would also like to say that it might be helpful to have central office voice in some of that. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty busy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But to follow that, we had a question on our last board meeting. So how are the trauma-informed practices that you're doing now going to inform the aspects that, you know, like the kid talk? We're just really starting to as a yeah. yeah. we should be one of our goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of our goals. <laughs> We're developing quite a list. <laughs> Great parent things of yeah. celebrating the teachers well, there. Yeah, absolutely. And the kids. And I said, please do that, George. Yeah, exactly. That's more. That's really important. So, how do you all feel? Do you want to talk about retreat, for example? Um, just maybe bat a few thoughts around. Up for that? Okay. So, board retreat. Um, Floor, I know this is a topic that's near and dear to your heart. Would you like to jump off on it? Sure. I think you and I had a conversation of trying to find a, like a common ground for a board retreat and maybe having donors join us. That's okay with you, and come up with something that would, you know, help us learn this summer, and and then we could. I don't. I don't want to be the one that picks the the goals, but how do we operate and be a more informed board so that we can operate at a higher level to keep up with this yeah. the the work that they're doing at the school. So the more informed that we are, the better that we can serve our kids and our so I think I would like to just maybe have a smaller meeting, but maybe we could set goals at large mm -hmm. as a as a board and what we want to you know, focus on the on the meeting. And, yeah. and I think we, we have a lot of work to do in in governance and how we wanna yeah. how we wanna 
clever now, so learning for, yes. for, the, entire, for the entire board. You know, like I, I shared with you, I had that, that book that I would like to share, but it doesn't have to be that book. I but, understand. But it's I would like to have like a like a pick up maybe a date today, but we don't we don't have enough for it. So maybe at the next meeting, yeah. pick a day that will work for everybody and have like a all morning retreat or all afternoon, depending on people's schedules or afternoon retreat, similar yeah. to what we did last year. But this time, instead of focusing on, on like we did last year with the GMG, uh, GMG, do it more. Um, and governance and how we're going to operate mm -hmm. together, but also focus on uh, equity, quality, and uh, our facilities. Uh, yeah, the the, possible, the range of possible topics is pretty vast, it, yeah. it seems to me. Dorothy, did you catch that? Um, oh, yeah, are you able to hear? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. I always forget that I have to be louder for you. Well, or, not, or I have to sit next to you. Right. <laughs> yeah, looking um, at you. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. Do you have any thoughts about the retreat? Um, my personal feeling is this time of year, look how busy everybody is. And I, I am not eager to give up a half a day, whatever, to spend a lot of time um, setting goals or whatever we decide to do before we've heard from the courts. Hmm. Um, to, for us to spend a whole lot of time um, uh, getting more organized and we have, well, we have to get more organized, but spending a lot of time before the court decision, um, I, I just think it, it might not be use, useful of our time. And so I, I, I would go with something that happens in July, but I know July is sort of a special time when the schools kind of go, <sighs> <laughs> is this true? <laughs> so they don't want to do anything then either. But again, you don't want to put it off till August. So that's yeah. the, the that's where we are. Vera, um, I would love to do a retreat. Um, I think it's beneficial for multiple reasons. It's re and I. I hear what you're saying, Dorothy, with the court hearing, but I think it can be beneficial regardless of what the court decides as far as how we move forward, whether we're, no matter what the configuration of governance is. Um, the ones that have been done in the past have been done, um, we held one at Conrad's house, and I think what we bring to the retreat is what makes it or breaks it. And I think there's so much work and so much organization and so much that needs to be done in a short time to make sure that August starts smoothly for our administration in our schools that I would hate to see us put that work off later on into the fall when other things at school are happening for us that have kids still in school. So I'd rather see us do it sooner than later and be very mindful about what we're what we're doing at the retreat and keep it um, so everybody has their voice, everybody has their time to speak mm -hmm. and make it a useful time and not get so down into the weeds of things that we don't make any progress. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Jonas? Uh, I think Dorothy's point is well taken. When do we expect resolution <laughs> from the courts? Well, um, Discussion agenda item 3.9 is litigation update. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we could jump to that very quickly if you. Uh, just a ballpark uh, estimate would be great. Probability that I've heard, and Dorothy, please correct me, is that before the end of June, Judge Mello will, dis will dispose of the remaining counts of the appeal that are before him. I, in fact, I've um, <coughs> heard that it could be um, like the third week of June. Or third week of June. Well, first I heard July, I June heard July 12th. 12th. I heard June, well, for this last hearing, there was a hearing last week. It was for the first day I heard of June 12th, then somebody said June 15th, and I thought, I don't think so, because that's a Saturday. <laughs> but mm -hmm. so there, there you have it. You know. 
after July 1st, who knows what's going to happen. But I think until um, Mello's present decision on the past hearing, we'll then decide if that it's going to be appealed immediately to the Supreme Court or what's going to happen. Yeah. And it's that two weeks that will be critical, the last two weeks of June. And is your impression that the attorneys are expecting it to have to go to the Supreme yes. Court one way or the other? Yeah. yeah. So we can expect um, uncertainty. Right. And it seems with the, you know, with the budget, with the policies, um, and having to do a lot of communication, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think your email was really good. The article <coughs> reporter made it, you know, was really good. Um, I think it was Paul Hanlon who asked if we were going to hold budget information sessions. Yes. Which, you yes. know, that was a thing, but yes, we should totally do yes. that. Um, <laughs> the time, it's, thing. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, certain, it doesn't look like June is a good time to do that. Um, actually, to, 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 do a, um, to do a retreat. Oh, to do a retreat. No, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, um, am I? No, I mean, you and I talked about this, and I was thinking, I was thinking early August, if yeah. anything. Yeah, and I, I think June is probably not a great time for no. Yeah. We're gonna have a little bit. For, not no, they're not time for them for school. This June is packed more than any June has been. I would also say that um, one of the things that is on the agenda that I was going to ask to add was meeting dates, and I thank Dorothy for recognizing that July is a time for rejuvenation for administrators. So I wanted to just check in about board meetings of this board. Yeah, I think the board, at least one board member could use some rejuvenation, I can tell you. <laughs> so I think, I, I mean, I would recommend that July there aren't meetings because mm -hmm. you're transitioning superintendents, your new superintendent will not be here until the 15th, uh, the 15th of July. Yeah. And, and let's, you know, and that that not be a time for meeting mm -hmm. and then pick it back up in August. Yeah. I, I think if we can do the work we need to do here in June, uh, and I'm kind of looking at my colleague across the table, Lori, from our checklist that we have of things that must have to have a minimum operation up and running with the policies and the financials that we have laid out for here in June for work. The organization should be able to run. I'm going to talk more about policies in a little bit, with work that Aaron and Jody Emerson and I are doing as a subcommittee of the leadership team. But mm -hmm. there's some things that have to be in place so student handbooks get printed correctly and, and things like that. Yeah. But I think that's work we can do in June. Yeah, I mean, does that does that seem okay? You're fresh. Yeah, I'm. I'm not raring to go. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about the idea of having a month off from yeah. this because well, there is a lot to do. But we can. Yeah, there's there's okay. there's an unbelievable amount to do, but um, there. Uh, I mean, we have to we have to respect the open meeting law, but um, we don't live far from each other. Yeah, we could meet up at the PO Cafe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can, um, you know, just sort of place myself at your disposal for a debriefing. And, and might I suggest that um, maybe next meeting on the 12th, and hopefully we have all 10 board members here, we might add to the agenda. That we always have on the agenda future items, mm -hmm. but maybe uh, we try to carve out a little bit. That's going to be a heavy agenda with operational actions that need to be done, uh, but that we try to think about what is... What does July look like without board meetings, and what is the work that may go on? Yeah, that's right. That's a great idea. So that yeah. it's a way of, if we do that as a team. Um, we've usually met in June, and then we split our retreat in half, and there's subcommittee, sub, and I don't want to use the word, there are groups of people that get together mm -hmm. um, to do a little bit of work to bring back to the whole group to learn from each other. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, and that's, that's also a way to, you know, rejuvenate. It's like working in the garden, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. Yeah, we just want to make sure that we're doing everything right. Yeah, yeah. So we and can talk more about that at the next meeting, but okay. I think that would be good to have everyone around the table. For that. Good, good. So we, we kind of um, took a long, scenic route um, around still talking <laughs> about the retreat. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And uh, Jonas, I guess you were, you were sort of into the retreat thing, but posed the question about the the appeal. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any? And, and I understand your, you know, 
your uneasiness with letting July kind of lie fallow. That's but, that, that's for me. If the, if the board and the administration are, are comfortable that we can do the things that we need to do, then we'll do that. For for me, it's losing uh, you know four weeks of you know sitting with you guys. Right there is so so many questions that I need to ask. And, right, and so I mean, when you talk about you know, <clears throat> you know different you know how we do governance, I need to know what that means. I need to know what the options are. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah, if we can spend time having coffee down at the post office, right, um, you know, yeah. um, please. You're a coffee drinker. You know, I, I'm uh, I'm up for it. Let's. Um, yeah. I just wonder what the options are. Yeah, yeah I think if we could meet and and maybe not impose on the administrators, but if we could have uh, maybe split the retreat in two parts and mid in July to do governance, so we have, you know, like sort of that basic uh, basic start mm -hmm. of, the, of the board and we could put our heads together and, and start it off. I, I don't, I truthfully don't think that, I, I agree with Vera, Vera that regardless of the court, the more learning that we do, even if then we're split apart is just the, we, we need to move forward and I and I feel really really strongly that the job of this board is not to at this point stand on opposing at 46 but on running our schools yeah. and no, like this right. shouldn't be our job like every time that we meet should be like about you know what how to move forward how to be positive like we have spent so much time talking about the negative parts that I want to spend a little more time talking about the positive parts. What could be, you know, what what could we achieve and, and try to move away as best as we can. You know, this is the cards that we've been dealt. Let's make the best out of, and we can do it. You know, it's just, I really want to move away of this. I don't want to split board, you know. And I always figured you for a poker player, Flo. And, 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 and it's not even a play, like, you know, like that communication, you know, you and I went back and forth on, and I, and I feel really strongly, I, after you sent that email, I, I actually called, I spent like half an hour with Kara Zimmerman, the, she was the chair of the board for, for Stull, mm -hmm. and, and I know how strong they were about not, you know, like how, and at their last meeting, they didn't even have people say they knew that they were going to lose the appeal, and that's their independent case, but they had made it really clear that at this uh, meeting, sort of their unified board, they are positive, they are like strong together and they're moving forward together, not because that's where they were going, because they really felt like their alternative was better. That's why they had a separate lawyer, because they wanted to control their narrative. You know, they were very purposeful of how they moved the job, but at the end they decided that, you know, that they were going to set goals together. Mm -hmm. And it is not going to be easy, but passing that, that they have that responsibility for their students. And I know that we all feel that, but we're still a little split into, well, into trying to preserve but, that. But it, isn't that, is that because at any point the cards could be redealt? But, to, you know, to Dorothy's point? But regardless of, regardless of that, right now we're learning more about our yeah. commonalities, and then we could still be spread around, but we can't. If we have our kids, they don't have three months to lose, one year to lose. We we need to keep moving yeah, yeah, yeah. forward in this board. If people outside this board want to continue to and come and report to us on how the appeal is going, I just feel like the work of this board shouldn't be. That's just personal, you know. It's not, you know, I. It's not. I, I don't intend to make everybody feel the same way. I just feel like at some point. The, this board at least needs to go oh, yes. and, and everybody else in the community could continue to to fight and we need to represent. I don't know. I, I just thought. No, that's <laughs> that's great. Thanks, Lord. Uh, Jonas, if I might, um, we have George, and with George, we acquire the magic number of six, which allows me to call the meeting to order formally. Um, and if do you mind if we just sort of. Uh, put a like a mm -hmm. scissora, um on this, and then we can come back to it. Um, so reception of guests. Uh, we have David. David's our guest. David is our David guest. Welcome, David. <laughs> Always glad to have you. You're our biggest fan, or or something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> agenda revisions and board comments. Um, any agenda revisions? 
anyone? All I would say is under meeting protocols 3.3, mm -hmm. if we could uh, add a meeting dates to that. And we started talking about that already. Sure. Okay. But meeting just so dates. we can get clarity on some dates and some locations. Sure. And I have proposals for you. But just Great. Okay. Thank you. And then 3.8, we have talked about doing that on the 12th. I'm not right. We're we're gonna um, we'll right. get there and yeah. Okay. Uh, I I haven't forgotten before. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, public comments and correspondence. Um, David will make his own comments um, <laughs> in his own manner and time. Um, I have heard from a bunch of people who are also both members of the public and colleagues. Um, you mentioned Brian and his email mm -hmm. about the, uh, the Stowe, Elmore, Morrisville um, board's approach. Uh, Alan Gilbert, I think have, have, you've all received his. Um, At some point, I'd like Lori to talk about that because there's some incorrect yeah. information in that email. Great, yeah, good, okay. That sounds good, I don't know when at what point I didn't know if you wanted to, to do that under public comments or if you wanted to do that under um, budget and election communication plan because Lori brought information about the tax rates and what she said last time and the way Alan responded to that. Mm -hmm. As we all know, Lori knows tax detail very deep to a high degree of competency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so she can do that there. Yeah, I think um, if there's no if there's no problem with doing it under that agenda item, budget communication, um, we'll work the Alan Gilbert thing. Um, Chris McVay uh, sent his regrets for this meeting, and then a long email of what he would have said if he had been here. So uh, I'll have the pleasure of presenting that. Uh, Matthew DeGroot. Uh, mentioned his hope that we would be able to include uh, Susanna Culver and Chani Waterhouse in uh, as, as sort of uh, members of the public augmenting negotiation team. I don't know if that's possible. You can appoint, the, you can appoint whomever you want to your negotiation team. As Great. A board. Great. That's good. So I'm just mentioning it now. We're not taking action on that, but um, just so that you know that that communication has happened. And other people um, seem very interested, gratifyingly so, in the possibilities that may be open now with this sort of fresh start and um, have are, are brimming with ideas. So uh, they, uh, I, I'm not going to get into them, they will, I told them that they should be the ones to, you know, to bring them or to, you know, encourage the students that they've been talked to, that they've been talking to, It'd be even better for them to um, bring up these ideas. And that's basically what I've heard from the public since last time we had a chance to talk about this. I don't know if any of you have anything to add or would like to... Lindy said an email apologizing to for not coming. Mm. She just had two sentences. Do you want me to read them right now, or do you? Oh no! If yeah. she's, I, I her apologies just about communication. She had. Oh, oh, she had about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said it is very important to me that it stays positive and leave out the force type language. The article was positive, and I think it had a nice tone. Tone is so important in message that are in messages that are sent out. I know you understand. She was addressing it to me. I understand this, but others. I want others to hear that I want a positive tone. Great. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? It's good? All right. Then, um, if you don't mind our going to the consent agenda, there's uh, quite a bit here, in including, are there board orders? There are not board orders. I was going <coughs> to, I meant to say when you're doing it. The gender revisions there are not board orders. Okay. It won't be until July. Okay, that's fine. It just was on the template. Good. I didn't cross it. Yeah, off. yeah, that's fine. Once you cross it off the template, then it won't be on the template. And we'd like to keep it on the template, yeah. so let's keep it on the template. I'd rather make this mistake. No, that's fine. What are board orders? Ah. The, 
Laurie, would you? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I got you. <laughs> 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 Good so, 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 workers are another way for saying those are the checks that we issue to yep. pay bills for the schools. Got it. Thank you. This is this before they're issued, correct? Um, they're they're printed. They're not distributed or signed and distributed until after you approve them. Um, we do have what we call a blanket order, which then, like, if the board doesn't meet or they change their meeting dates, we're still allowed to pay vendors um, to help prevent fees. So next meeting we will be talking about is authorizing us to run checks in the summer if you didn't meet. Got it. Yeah. And Lori. Um, I know from just the U32 side of things that those board orders can actually add up to some impressive, um, you know, lists. Mm -hmm. So how how do you foresee this board? How much in the way of will we have to kind of sift through or, or look at? Next meeting, we would be discussing the procedures, you know, the procedures you all find on your individual boards on who touches what. So there's an internal control process that would continue and be very similar to what we currently do. Um, having said that, um, then the board would see the summary of the internal control. So basically a purchase order happens and we can review this at the next meeting when you see that document. But it talks about the purchase order process, the invoice process, who sees it, who signs it, and how to get paid. Got it. And kind of gives you a little bit more comfort that by the time you see it, it's actually been scrutinized by, you know, staff, principals, secretaries, our office, and Beautiful. the treasurer. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks very much. Okay. So we have minutes to approve. Um, <clears throat> a lot of minutes to approve. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if... The motion to, should we make it on this late or you want to do it one by one? I, please, if you want to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole, then we can talk about everything so together. We probably have to separate. We don't need to separate. Okay, I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Flora. Oh, second. And Dorothy, second. So, um, uh, first I'll, I'll ask if there are any changes. I have just one. On the May 31st minutes, minutes my, my last name is I was going to cop to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the only thing. <laughs> and there were actually others, but I think they actually got fixed before this packet came out. Most likely they did. Because there was a, um, a few spelling errors that I think were fixed. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Vera. Um, does anybody else have anything that they'd like to see changed? I, I would then just um, defer to Bill. Uh, my impression was that on page six, Bill, um, the second to last paragraph, the last sentence, um, what I heard you say was not that the State Board of Education is the only entity that can levy tax rates, but that the state, that state government. State government, the, the state tax department yeah. is the only one that can levy tax, education taxes. It's not individual towns. Or right, that, can, that sort of calculates and determines the. Right, it's, it, it's <coughs> all done, it, it's all done from the state tax department. Yeah. And the state, the state is the one that levies taxes, and I'll let Lori tell me when I'm saying something wrong, but the towns do not levy taxes for educational purposes. Right. Then that should probably be changed. Yes. Um, so, Lisa? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, if you uh, say the State Department of Taxation. I'm just trying to find it before you. Oh, page six. It's the second to last paragraph. So the very last sentence that says. It was the 22nd, right? Uh, that would be the 22nd, okay. correct. And which section was it under? Because I'm not going by the same. Oh, yeah. This is after Dorothy Naylor moved to approve the budget in the amount of $33,854,000, etc. It's 3.1 on the agenda. 3.1.4. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And now what? What am I changing? Um, Bill Kimball stated that he believes yes. the state... Department of Taxes. Department of Taxes. Yeah, in fact, um, because his belief is true, <laughs> um, we could even say stated that the state 
Department of Taxes is the only entity that can, um, yeah, levy is a funny word because I think the legislature levies taxes, but sets tax rates. Yeah, sets mm -hmm. tax rates? Sets and collects. Sets, sets tax and rates and collects tax rates. Great. It happens in the town, but this is it. Yeah, because I know this is a, an important point. Yep. So, so, so Bill Kimball stated that the State Department of Taxes is the only entity that sets tax rates and collects taxes? Education, education. Is, education tax dollars would be the best way to say it. Wait, where am I putting in social tax dollars? After the tax rates. Yeah, sets tax rates and, and, collects, and collects education, education tax, tax dollars. dollars. Thanks very much. That's um, that's all that I have. No other changes? Ready for a vote on the consent agenda as moved by Flora and seconded by Dorothy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Good. All right. So um, we pick up where we left off. Um, before you arrived, George, we were just, uh, before you got here, we just were kind of chatting with the principals and with um, the uh, department heads at the central office about how things were going at this stage of the school year. And we started in talking about the retreat and different ideas about the retreat. And, um, you know, the, uh, the work that needs to be done, the there are basically some really good ideas about um, what we can do, what kind of, you know, um, perhaps visioning can be done, what um, what sorts of uh, goal setting we might consider doing. Um, Dorothy made, I think, uh, you know, an important practical point that there's still this appeal that's sitting in the courts and the possibility, as Jonas noted too, that the, um, the hand that we're currently dealt may be brought up and re-dealt um, differently. Uh, but Vera, um, I thought, also said something interesting, that it could still be a valuable um, thing to do if we essentially kept with our sort of two-track policy, if whatever we, if we invest our energies in um, advancing the agenda of this merged board in a way that would also, if it doesn't continue and we get a stay or a delay or whatever, the, whatever brings us back to the previous um, you know, dispensation, that it would still be valuable for that. Am I, am I mm -hmm. sort of, um, yeah, uh, and, and that, that kind of makes sense to me, to try to, um, it's consistent with what we've been trying to do um, all along. And what I'm thinking also is that, is just, you know, the nature of the concept of a retreat it's basically, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's sort of a, you know, a step back from engagement at the battlefront, basically, and an opportunity to, to take stock, but um, also an opportunity to kind of not be so laser focused as we typically are on the day-to-day -day business. So um, I'm thinking, you know, goal setting and visioning um, are really important and I, I don't want to you know set those aside for any length of time but maybe you know considering that we're just running so fast and trying to do so much in so little time um, the the possibility of actually taking a step back and thinking about um, you know, something that Chris said, I, I mentioned to you, Bill, um, here in, after the candidate forum here in Berlin, he said, 
yeah, maybe it's not the best way how we got here, but now that we are here, this could be a great opportunity. And I think if we were to have, consider a retreat where we just think about opportunities in a, in a not necessarily a, um, a, you know, thoroughly structured way, and I know this is, um, for managers, this is a hard thing because you always want to get things done and want to have time be valuable in that way. But um, if we were able to just share amongst ourselves what, what opportunities we see or would like to see out of, out of this, and um, in a, you know, um, not just board members, oh, but less you um, but also including members of the leadership team, um, including, uh, of course, the new superintendent. That, that's um, my only pause from our earlier yeah. conversation is that I don't think you should have a board meeting until Deborah is able to be with you. Mm -hmm. Even if the rest of the leadership team doesn't have to come, and that's one thing you need to talk about is, you know, what is the attendance requirements? I've told the team you need to be here at every meeting. That may or may not be the case, and there may be good reason to do it or not to do it. I'm not trying to put a value judgment on it either way, but you need to have that discussion <coughs> in your formats or your meetings. And until that's decided, we have that time to have that discussion. Uh, but I think you shouldn't have a meeting, and she's not here until July 15th. Yes. You shouldn't meet as a board without your, your superintendent. Yes, yes, agreed. So we'd fall on July 1st. Following July 1st, she, she, she doesn't come back. She isn't here on job by her, con her, her contract till July 15th. So there's like a 15 there's day, a 15 day transition. Yeah. 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 And we're, we're figuring, <laughs> Deborah and I met today, and we're figuring that out. So we're working with the team. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. So, anyway, I just wanted to put that out and floor. So, if, what I meant about maybe having a, uh, a part of the retreat without is exactly similar to what you were saying. Maybe we could use the meeting after the after the team is meeting to get to know because it's a new board. It was part of that retreat to get to know each other better and how we make decisions and you know, so do that that part too and then bring every because they've been operating together for a while and this is kind of like new for us. So maybe there is some advantage mm. like just having a like a basic uh, you know basic training and basic get to know each other. So basic retreat of yeah. how we make decisions, background and, and stuff. That was with the new superintendent, of course, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it, so that I just wanted to talk about No, that, that. that's, I, I appreciate that, yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know, we've sort of been talking, uh, again, mixing goals and who should attend uh, willy-nilly, but um, George, do you have any any thoughts about this, or? Um, I, I mean, just taking it, you know, what we've done with our high school board. Um, I'm not one for an all-day event, um, but that's that's asking a lot. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, I do I do see value in, uh, in in maybe an evening or or a couple of series of, of evening events. Um, that we can talk goals and, and get to know each other um, because you know we are entering kind of a new a new era here um, that I think we need to spend some time and figure out. Yeah. Great. Um, so one of the um, with the very next agenda sub agenda or agenda sub item or whatever is establish planning group. And um, I mean, the initial thought was that uh, Flora, Jonas, and I could maybe do this unless unless there one of one of you would like to be involved in it, and I would be happy to you know step back and and just kid it. Um. I just, I want to be able to have the conversation as to, we're only a board of 10. And going through the status of the board and the um, feedback and input from a larger group gives many different perspectives. And now we've already narrowed that down to 10. 
I want to be very, very mindful of the subcommittees that we create to start um, our work off with only a minimal amount of perspectives. Versus, I think this is why I go back to the retreat. I would like to be able to do some of this work at a retreat where we're all there, all bring our perspectives and our input versus a small subcommittee of different groups. And I'm not sure what, how many subcommittees will be created, but I'm sure there will be over time. But I just, I'm, I'm very leery to create all these subcommittees of smaller groups of three or less. Sure. We're already minimizing the but you know, yeah, uh, and if um, and if we if we deliberately, uh, if Scott, we can I ask you a question? Yeah, by asking, I I think I and I want to check my what I heard from Vera, because I thought I heard something different than what you intended to ask. So I'm wondering if there's a comprehension. There's not. There, we're missing some comprehension in what you asked. And huh. So Vera, stop me if. if that, I think you're talking about just a planning. A group to plan, plan. Yeah, to plan yeah. the retreat. Yeah, like um, to figure out, Options. you know, what sandwiches to get. And, um, and that I'm fine with, but actually building like the agenda and the topics that we're going to discuss, I think we all need input yes. on that, is oh, what I'm I, saying. I absolutely yeah. agree. And I, I think, you know, what you, uh, I, I was so, I was so kind of focused on what you were saying um, that uh, thank you for stepping in, Bill. I, I didn't realize that there was any sort of um, maybe obliquity there, um, but yeah, uh, we should all be involved in the um, in the agenda. Uh, and and my thought is that the agenda should be as simple and open, mm -hmm. and basically disengaged from the you know the fray as possible, and and you know big picture and with an opportunity for everyone to participate and to share what they really want out of this and what they want to see out of this. So may, may I suggest that the next meeting on the 12th we, I mean, Scott, you and I may have to put some times on things because there's going to be so much in the next meeting, yeah. but that uh, Jonas and Floor and Scott, you ask for anyone to email you thoughts or ideas, maybe you can bring a working sheet that has options that on the next Wednesday everyone can look at it and say, is it too detailed or not enough detail of what we're doing? Mm -hmm. And just kind of and more as a laundry list, not necessarily in the order in which it's going to be done, because what I've suggested and I did in the last meeting was that you look at a facilitator to help make that, and the facilitator would help give process to the work that you're doing. Yeah. Or, or and um, that may even be a for a, a, a further uh, meeting later right. on. This this may be even you know more basic than yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying to think of a way to, to allow you to get some like planning. Like when do we think? Here are a couple of possible dates to bring that back next time. Here, you know, people please email if the three of you are doing that, what they are, just compile them and bring them back. And what do we like and what do we don't like and have a quick, so we're not starting from scratch and we have to brainstorm here for 45 minutes. I don't know what, if that helps kind of give a little process to putting this together. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You're okay with that? Mm -hmm. Great. So if um, Jonas, Fleur, yeah, we'll just sort of kind of be the, coordinating group or whatever. Just, just to be clear, we're allowed to email between three or up to five people, but once we get six people on an email chain? Yeah, even then, we don't want to get too cute. <laughs> um, um, I think we can, we can, especially if it's just organizational, okay. um, yeah. we're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anything more on the retreat for now? No? Okay. So, this is the big enchilada, the required policies which run from page 27 to page 2003. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I want to apologize, and this will be this way for the next couple of meetings, uh, but I wanted to ensure that everyone had access to the policies. 
Um, I wrote you a memo on page 27, and hopefully you all had a chance to look at this <coughs> ahead of time. Um, really, we have a, there are, we're using the VSBA's uh, language and, and the way they um, group policies and how they code policies. And while it may be that um, the VSBA right now is changing, not the, the, the whole state of Vermont is recoding their policy manuals. So these may not look like familiar codes when you see the table, the page the tables on pages 28 through 20 through 31. These numbers might look different than what you're used to seeing in your formal local policies. But if you look under there, there are the required policies, which are on the left-hand side, the recommended policies, which are in the center, and then policies to consider on the right-hand side, if you look at any of those pages. Mm -hmm. And so what, uh, in talking with Aaron and Jody Emerson, who's not here tonight, um, and with the whole leadership team, because we talked about this at first, and then we said, hey, subgroup gets this. Um, we're, look, we're reviewing all the existing policies in Washington Central. So in this packet, there are all required policies plus one. And the one, plus one is, the, for those of you who've been on the board, that we'd love to call the policies on policies, which is A1 which is the first one in the whole packet, but that's really important for you to set how you will adopt policies going into it. And I think it should be purposely as we go to adoption at the next meeting, that that be the first one you adopt. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at page 32, you'll see a table that lists all the required policies. All the required policies and this policy on policy is the same through all the Washington Central Supervisory Union schools. So there isn't any language derivation. There is some language derivation from the VSBA models, but between the schools, the only one that's a little different is weapons. And it's the definition of what a knife is. And I have it on strong recommendation from the leadership team, because we talked about this, that we want the definition of a knife to be any knife, not a length, just a knife. It makes it a lot easier in schools for operations. Mm -hmm. So um, the rest of them, you, they are in unison. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this isn't a very, um, that we don't need to have a lot of debate on this because we have these policies already. We're really switching the title. And what we gave you in the packet shows it in the old form. You may see a Berlin in there, you may see a U32, you might see a Washington Central title. For the next meeting, we would reformat them with Washington Central Unified Union School District and dates of the meeting to be adopted. So that's my short, condensed version of the overall process, which I outlined with you in the memo. At the, we are doing tomorrow, literally, Aaron, Jody, and I at 10 o'clock, I have asked Aaron and Jody to look at the handbooks and see if there's anything that isn't in the required policies that we need adopted by July 1 to support the student handbook for. So we're going to have that on it for you next meeting. Okay. Great. Aaron, did I miss anything from our work? <laughs> <laughs> or anyone else, but Aaron, Aaron, Jody's not here. I would ask the two folks that are helping with, and Krista's doing a, a really large lift on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any questions? Uh, I guess I have one. Yep. Uh, apart from the firearms weapons, are there any other policies that are um, that have variance between schools? So, from our reading, that we didn't find anyone. There is one new one here that I forgot to say that was new as of last year. Freedom of expression. The freedom of expression. So we've taken the VSBA model policy and just put it right in. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to I need to note that. Uh, but the rest are the besides the weapons. There are no. I don't remember us seeing anything as we read through them. Because we have had a policy committee. That's, that's, that's done. That's done this work. Yeah. Done yeah. This work. So just just a question about the, the way these are coded uh, in the left in the in, in the table. 
uh, under Board Operations A1, the conflict of interest is, is identified as A1, but it appears that A1 is the policy on policies, and yes. conflict of interest is B3. It doesn't. That doesn't. Okay. Doesn't We're going to fix all those yeah. sure, sure, okay. for next okay. time. Doesn't matter. That's what I was saying is that they're yeah, yeah, recoding yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Just what I wanted to. So clarify. we're yep. we're going to recodify for the next time. Yep. The new, uh, we decide to, when Jody and Aaron and Krista and I met, we deliberately decided to give you this time what it looks like from the current organizations. Got it. There are sometimes that there were policies that were enacted across the SU that were deliberately at Washington Central, but not at the schools. The conflict of interest is a good example. You see that in that table where it says WCSUY. Mm -hmm. It means the policy resides in Washington Central. There were other ones that were in all the schools, but not at Washington Central. Hazing, harassment, and bullying is one of those. Mm -hmm. It's the same policy, but yes. so as, as Floor just said, a lot of this work was done in the policy committee as they've been going through the policies. Great. Um, may I just ask, uh, which schools have still allow, you know, modestly sized knives? This counts. The policy, I think. The current policy still says something like it has to be under two and a quarter inches. Under two and a quarter inches. Yeah. Yeah. Ours, ours, ours says two and a half, but there is uh, a piece in there about brandishing mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that that sort of takes out the length requirement if it is brandished. Mm -hmm. So if it's, yeah. if it's used as a weapon, you share it, right? Yeah. 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 So, Maybe I'd have to go back and look to do the audit for you. Yeah. But we, we had talked about this as a team. Yeah. Um, I just remember when U32, when we when we banned knives altogether, um, I got a very um, interesting email from from Paul Hannon, and uh, talking about you know growing up and yeah in the farm and and you know um, so just wanted to be aware of the cultural dimension of this that it's I think for where we it's actually made a better <coughs> cultural dimension and Stephen tell me if I'm wrong so Kevin can, can oh, I just interject I want so, to hear so the we've we've had very few issues since we've actually said no knives mm -hmm. um, you know uh, you know we have an occasional piece but but it's gotten less and less and less as we have communicated more and more and more I mean we the, the distinction between a two and a quarter and a two and a half or a two and three quarter, I mean, there's really no distinction in the knife, and we really weren't going to split hairs about this. They, they're, they're weapons. Our, if you recall, at U32, we had it in our procedures that if a student arrived on campus and realized that they still had a knife with them, that they just needed to turn it into the office at, upon arrival at school. And I've actually had a couple of kids who have but here they come from, uh, you know, tech center. from tech center. Yeah, Actually, so the tech center is, the, the, they don't allow either. Um, so, uh, but they, they've arrived, you know, they, they were doing something the night before, they trip on the same pants, and, and they're like, whoops. And so we just, you know, we keep it. They, they have, we do have to have a parent come get it. We can't just hand it back to them. Uh, but the issues are so few and far between now. I mean, it, 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 distinguishing between uh, a knife that is a you know considered a weapon at one increment and, and, and another is just impossible. Yeah. So if they check their knives at the door, then yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That works. The, the sheriff, you know, yeah. <laughs> put your guns here and that kind of thing. So. I, I figured as a text and you would. Well, we we're fully yeah. understand. <laughs> <the knife. laughs> just check them at the, the door. Um, yeah. As as you know, this year we've had very. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think back. I, I don't know that we've had a hearing this year on a knife. On a knife. We're fine. They know now. We still got a couple weeks to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. I'm. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, for for those of you who have who allow knives right now, do, do you think there needs to be sort of a an uh, information campaign or so so I want to I, I want to make a difference between a, a weapons policy violation mm. and knives being allowed yeah. Yeah. so knives are not allowed in school <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, at all uh -huh. but but what you are seeing is the procedures that we would follow as per a weapons policy violation mm -hmm. um, 
and, and, and so there, there is a difference there. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, uh, whether you think they're an informational thing to parents or... I, I, I think it's pretty clear, uh, at least in my building, that knives are not allowed at school. Okay. Uh, yeah. I would say the same. And we have situations like they may come for Cub Scouts in the evening and want to show their, you know, their Cub Scouts. Swiss Army. Right, a Swiss yeah. Army. A tool, what they think of as a tool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We have a, a conversation. We teach them about it. We call the parents. They come and get it. I mean... I feel like the kids know knives are not allowed in school, but sometimes they bring, we had a few instances last year with very young students who wanted to carve wood out at recess and brought a steak knife, right? Like that does happen <laughs> and it's not whittling. <laughs> or whittling. Um, and, and wanted to use it more as a tool than anything else. Yeah. And so we deal with it when yeah. it happens. Great. Okay, but just just to, to Matt's point, there is a way to distinguish between yes. bringing knife to school and a weapons violation. Yes, yes. Okay. <coughs> yes. Um, so then there's the student freedom of expression in school-sponsored media, which hasn't yet been vetted through the policy committee. It at, well, we, yeah, or we, has don't have, we don't have, have a policy committee. committee. Uh, I mean, through the supervisory and... Uh, no, it did not go to there. Uh -huh. It did not go to there. It was one of... Uh, it was on the list to, to get to, but it just came through the previous uh, legislative session, so not the one that just happened, mm -hmm. but last year. Uh -huh. And then Ooh. we had a year, we have this year to... We have this school year to get it enacted. Okay. Can so, I ask a question about that? Yeah. So, um, so you say it comes through legislator, um, and... And we rely solely on um, on their legal. So what happens is there are three entities that come together to draft draft policy that come through VSBA. Yep. It is the Joint Legislative um, Council. Yep. Which is which is are the folks that wrote the legislation, so have the intent. There are the um, attorneys that work at our council for the Agency of Education. And then there is the attorney for the Vermont School Boards Association. They all meet and pull together and write draft, all draft policy that model policy that may be used. So then, how much say or sway do we have as a policy committee on these things? You can make it more stringent, or in this case, more. Uh, I'd have to look at it and read with the policy. Yep. Um, but it really outlies it, it really depends on the legislation George yeah. like in the hazing harassment bully you have about you don't have really any say right you get it or, or you make it more strict I, I guess I, I yeah I was more curious as to you know what real work does the policy committee have to do so it, it depends on which policy if all the legal on. jargon is taken care of and we're covered yeah that, that's why. That's done. why part. That's one of the services the VSBA provides is being part of that member. You have access to those model templates. And right. If because they're at the table, you you can't be stripped of what comes out of legislation at a joint a joint legislative council right. or the agency of education. But then the models get developed and are given to boards through the VSBA. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So anyway, um, what I would suggest as and, and uh, unless I'm shot down on this, is that we go with the continuity of policies that are already approved and in place and being followed in the schools um, with, <clears throat> pardon me, with the one exception of the student freedom of expression. That one we should, we should pay closer attention to. But, um, but otherwise, you know, um, pass on first reading all of the others. And if anybody wants to, and, and I suppose we could even pass the freedom of expression on first, first reading, reading, and, reading and, if you have and then change, change it in a second. Yeah. 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 I, would, I would suggest that. OK. That, uh, that is the one that we should really um, look yeah, at. It was closely. on the policy committee docket, and they just didn't get to it. They just didn't okay. get to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you don't mind if I skip to Action Agenda 4.1. Mm -hmm. 
for approved first reading of required policies. Is there a motion? I'm happy to make a motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll move it. Okay, Do Dorothy will move it. Special yeah. words, or can I just say I approve first reading of required policies? Yeah, move to approve the first reading of required policies. A floor second? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Just r real quick, why we're paying special attention to the freedom of expression, right? Because not the board hasn't been adopted. Hasn't we, have, we haven't had it in the prior mm -hmm. in the school. It has been a policy that we've been using here. It's only okay. been a, we have until the end of this school this to June thirtieth of this year to get it. Yeah, and I, and I don't want to take up a, a, a yeah. lot of time, but is is this? Why is this policy now? The state state yeah. law was passed a year in yeah. the previous session, mm -hmm. requiring all schools to have a policy on uh, student on student freedom of expression. Yep. If you remember the Burlington, Burlington. yeah, that's where I was going. Yeah, okay. This is why we have it. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I think I can say for all my colleagues, we're in favor of what's here. Okay. Um, we believe in the way the policy is written. We win the pride too. It aligns with our current practice. That's good. That's good. That's good. That helps, definitely. Right, that should remind <laughs> We know what you mean, Steve. <laughs> um, any other uh, points, discussion? No? In that case, all in favor of the motion to approve the first reading of required policies, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Any opposed? None. So that passes. Good. Now, um, Meeting protocols. Um, I know <laughs> perhaps there's one meeting protocol time um, that it's already 10 of 8. So we may. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, and maybe this is a good place to, as you open that up, if we could, and it's obviously up to the board, but if we could try to, if we could keep this to two hours, we've got two weeks in a row yeah. of these meetings. If we have 40 minutes left of when we were. To start. Yeah, I, I, I would. Any objection to ending at eight thirty? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Just oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you guys get this stuff done? An hour a week, two hours every two weeks. Most people. Happen? Most people talk a lot faster than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And they aren't. The, I will say, you. Jonas, they're yeah. not this packed. We yeah. have a lot okay. that we have to do because of the formation of yep. of the. Uh, of the organization, and so I know that I will be pushing on you for the next couple of meetings to say, "Yeah, we have a lot to do." Good. Okay, so um, meeting protocols. Um, we just talk about the setup we did tonight. Yeah, uh, this was our brainchild. Here is yeah. mine. <laughs> um, I, my hope would be that someday we might have. Um, you know, a uh, gallery. A gallery. Um, <laughs> instead of sort of Clint Eastwood Memorial <laughs> empty chairs. Um, but uh, how does I mean how does this how does this feel to you? Oh, is this the, yeah, configuration. the configuration? And uh, I think you know scrambling us up so that we don't have you know, sort of town blocks sitting next to each other a little bit, you know, mix it up a bit. It's okay? Yeah. All right. Um, you are one impressive block, however. <laughs> Very intimidating. We got so, David to sit in with us. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that, that, just, that just intensifies it. Okay. Um, Good. Well, let's let's keep trying that then. Okay. And, uh, and it's it, supposed to be more of an arc, but it's the best I yeah. can do in yeah. my setup. Yeah. Okay. And um, meeting dates. So, yeah. think, so we are having a meeting next Wednesday, and Matthew has been gracious enough to offer Doty as the next place we will be. Thank you. So we'll be at Doty next Wednesday. For some of you, that's a very close drive. For others, it's. I can walk. A little yeah. further. <laughs> Is there an SU meeting? There is not next Wednesday. The next the supervisor union carousel meeting is Monday the seventeenth mm -hmm. at U thirty two. Okay. There would not be a meeting on the nineteenth because there are many 
graduation and other ceremonies that are happening that night. Yeah. So we're going to try not to have a meeting on the Wednesday the 19th. And I would ask you all to hold the 26th, the day after the budget election. There may need to be a meeting that night. June 26th. Oh. June 26th. Don't we have to have a public hearing about that? Yes. Yes, yes you do, yeah. 10 days prior. And I was kind of holding that till we got down to that item about communications plan. Unless, unless it fits in uh, with meeting dates. Just so that we would have it would not meet with the 12 we have to be after the 15th mm -hmm. and before the night before and before and yeah and before the night so the night up to the night before. up to the night before it has to be 10 days prior right so Dorothy's exactly right where she was going on yeah okay but I was holding that for the budget election communication plan okay we can do that and then um, you know, for July was my only next piece, and um, I know I'll speak for my colleagues that uh, they deserve to have July yeah, to themselves. Um, I, I certainly don't begrudge them that, and we can um, we can do things ourselves. We can. And, and Deborah talked to me. I met with Deborah this morning. She she will be here starting July fifteenth. And if there is something in July, she will make it work for herself okay. to be there and be part of a meeting if the board so chooses. But I told her I would push not to have one on July 3rd, the day before July 4th. Yeah. She asked me when the regular scheduled meetings were yeah. the first one the third. So she could be here for the third if you so choose. But you may want to talk about that again yeah. at the next meeting. Great. Okay. Uh, I, I should let you know that I will not. I will be unavailable from the fifteenth to the twenty third June. Fifteenth to twenty third. Questions in and Bill, uh, I know we talk about having one meeting uh, at school and then the other meeting at eight thirty two. My only question is that I have talked to Scott about having some PCA board members and some are coming from very far away at the next meeting. So you know. We, we have a retreat the VCA all right, day, and right, then right, they'll right. be coming, and they're already coming from really far. So I'm just wondering if it's possible Sorry, to have that meeting at U32. I had talked to Scott, and I yeah, and so if, if not, I know that they will make it work. But they're already coming from really far. Away. Yeah. So if and then we had talked as a board of maybe because everybody around you doing one at a school and one at 32 one at a school and one at 32 at our last meeting but just I'm happy to I don't have any preference on it and it doesn't matter to me yeah I would hate to deprive yeah, know, of the we really we really have a lovely space I know you do, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um but it would be it would be advantageous I, 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 I yeah. have to check the u32 calendar which I can't do right now but um, you can't do that on that phone to get the <laughs> calendar. Oh, he's already trying to get these in his calendar. <laughs> so you're, you're talking about the next 12th week? 12th yeah, yeah, I mean, we have, we have to look. So I just say I have to look. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I, I come away from the meeting with the thought of that we were rotating around. So I just started doing that. But I can. But you, you were the one that mentioned at the last meeting that going back and forth because be, the administrators were, uh, that's why we talked at the last meeting on last time. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, but, I guess I so I was planning. It doesn't have to be that way, but like, but so, it, so there's yeah. five people there's, coming. There's one I thing I. There's one thing I didn't catch that Thor was referring to the. VSBA there's a VSBA retreat or something. Or, okay. um, there were, to talk about VSBA dues. <laughs> um, so that this would be part of the VSBA dues dis agenda item discussion. Which would be next, next time instead of this yes. time? Uh, well, uh, we would be able to at least, you know, dig into it next time because there would be people here who could mm -hmm. contribute to the discussion. Well, um, um, I, I need to think about that. Yeah. Okay. Plan. Okay. Scott, I would just offer. Um, we already put it in our calendar for the room. Okay. So it's all. So if we need it, it's there. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. And um, I'll keep that parenthesis open, Dorothy. 
regarding. Yeah. And uh, we can also talk about it offline. If yeah. you want. Um, so, any so other... Scott, let's just say that you and I will confer by Friday, so everyone knows where they're going by Friday. Okay. Does that make sense? Since yep. you and I will be probably have an agenda planning time by the end of the yeah. day Friday, as we usually have been yes. doing. So okay. All right. Um, any other sort of protocolary stuff regarding meetings? Um, we have we have an item on committee makeup, and there have been a number of ideas on this. But um, given the you know the ticking clock, mm -hmm. maybe this is something that can be again deferred to another discussion. Yeah. No, <clears throat> keeping in mind <laughs> various comments of earlier. Cool. Don't yeah. we first have to decide what committees we want? Yeah, well, I think that's, I think that's, that's, that's what you're talking about. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. That's what he's yeah. talking about. Yeah. You know, we never did get to when we're going to have a public hearing. Oh, we will. <coughs> we will um, at 3.5, at agenda item oh, 3.5. Oh, okay. All right. I just didn't want to let it slide. No, no, no. I appreciate that. Thanks. So um, if we punt committee makeup, no one will object too loudly, I hope? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so moving on to general fund and capital fund. All I was going to say is uh, we're going to talk a lot more about this on the 17th when we have the carousel meeting for Washington Central and the local boards. Uh, Scott and I were talking, he said it would just be good for me to mention for two minutes that uh, Lori and I are still working on getting what the needs to be left at the local, budget, local general funds and then what can be the amounts for each local board to transfer to their capital funds so that and they stay in the and as you all have heard they you know we've been told through legal <coughs> advice that those can stay will stay for the use of the buildings in which they're appropriated to so that I think was more a reminder from when we developed the agenda we just had a reminder for me to say that mm -hmm. and not really yeah. get into it much tonight. exactly yes so um, the, it's just sort of a you know Ticking the box just to keep it kind of on the back burner of your minds. We'll be talking about it further. So moving on to budget and election communication plan. Here we are, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we know when it should take place. So yeah. Has anybody <coughs> given us a good date? Other than the Sunday night? <laughs> oh, yeah, that would not qualify as a good date. So I haven't looked at dates yet for that. Uh, I actually have to say, Dorothy, even though I know it's there, it's not one of those that I've put any thought into. Um, right now, it was getting, and really up to 12 o'clock today, was making sure the ballot was coming out right. Um, so yeah. so the, you will see, I gave all of you at your, at your location on your table, I'm sorry, Scott, I didn't leave one for myself, no, no, no. a copy of what the annual report is. It is printed, as you can see. They are being. T they have been taken out, I believe, to town clerks and to schools. They're there. Um, postcards are. We're supposed to have postcards by Friday going in the mail to everyone. They're. They were being printed today. Uh, knowing jet service, it probably means they'll go out tomorrow instead of Friday. They're very quick. They do our printing for us. Mm -hmm. So that is happening. So the electorate should receive postcards in the next three to five days. Great. Uh, so that's that's that piece. But I, Dorothy, thank you for saying that you need at least one forum. Yeah, in and, ten days. Yeah, um, I. One way of doing it: What if we were to combine a forum with a meeting on the nineteenth? Is it? No, it's too many graduations. Too yeah. many graduations. Well, I definitely would. I, I would have to say for my te for the team. Yeah. they need to be doing the work of serving the students, the parents. Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, apologies. Um, <clears throat> so, then, what dates? What dates? The night before is typically when the crickets are heard chirping at um, at U thirty two. Uh, I don't know. School will be closed. Yeah. And the graduation so Monday the 24th conclude. is a special yeah. school board meeting here for, for our Berlin? easements. For your easements? It's a floor vote, so maybe. It's a floor vote. Wow. 
just like we had in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I was tempted to ask you if we could piggyback on that, but that doesn't sound like it would work either. No, I work. We get a lot of Berlin people, which would be nice, actually. <clears throat> Um, Do we have to have one session? No, you can have as many as you want. You yeah. need to have at least one. Okay. So maybe that's that's should be our strategy is to fan out and um, and figure out what works in our in our different areas. I I think we should have at least one that is all together. You know, I think the first one should be all together. So the first one should be all together, and we want to add to that. To all yeah. The yeah, and make sure that we're all. Sometimes we've done, and I know it might be crazy, but we've done it uh, before town meeting. We, we do that Saturday to make sure that uh, you know, Not you know June, everybody can come. Think <laughs> yeah. Saturday. I just think it's important to have it before the yeah. 21st no, I, I, because a lot of people are already going to be headed out of town and, yeah. uh, you know, like a lot of, especially parents disconnect after the 21st and they're like done. Yes. And, uh, and we want them to, we want them to be informed and to know that, you know, yeah. the vote is coming up and that it's important to come mm -hmm. out and vote. Yeah. What about the 18th? What's going on then? Graduation. I don't know. Mm, eighth grade was when's the eighth grade, Stephen? Twentieth. Twentieth. So yeah. So the eighteenth is a possible day. Yeah. Eighteenth. Eighteenth. Um. So unfortunately, Jonas won't be here for that. Um, oh, so you June I can't, or July. But there's that's June. Yeah, I can't can't be here for any of this except for Monday. Except the Monday right before. Oh, the yeah. 17th, the 24th. The 24th, yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean... It's just a hearing. We're not going to be voting. We're not going to be voting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I want to be there. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand. Uh, we, we want you there. Um, but we just have to work, you know, time. It's, um, it's the hard task. Well, what's master. happening the 20th? There's eighth grade graduation. So the 18th, um, should we tentatively pencil it in? Yeah, I think we should. And where? Yeah. We'll look, we'll look for room. We'll see what we can do. We'll be fine. Okay, great. Either the cafeteria or the auditorium or the 131. If we're expecting a crowd, we can use the gym. Yeah, so entertain them. Very funny. At 6.30? Uh, yeah, at 6.30. Okay. Is this called a budget information meeting? Or yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Yep. And we, the amendments are two. And the articles, yep. Yep. Yeah, we should definitely incorporate no, that. No, you know, uh, Dorothy's right on. You need to have an information hearing for both. Yeah. You have to, you have to warn it as both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, that's why I was thinking for that. So we're doing basically 3.5 and 3.6 yeah. of um, in a block. So uh, what time? Um, so six, uh, six thirty. Six thirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anything else that we need to? Uh, oh, we just want to give it some information. Right. From our last meeting, just to clear some things up that seem a little foggy. Oh, right. Uh, the Alan Gilbert thing. Right. Well, yeah. and also, um, so I came prepared to talk a little bit more about the tax impacts. Mm -hmm. I realized um, that we could do a better job um, explaining the tax rate changes. And so what I did was I kind of gave myself a few talking points. I'll keep it brief. Um, at the last meeting, there was a lot of talk about the Calis tax impact. And I think your memo on... Um, Front Porch Forum kind of clarified mm -hmm. that you, the town had already voted for a tax increase prior to the merger compensation. Yes. So we needed to kind of work on splitting things into pieces. Mm -hmm. And so when I was doing that and looking at Alan's memo, I realized um, that every it's true for every town that not all of the tax impact is due to the merger. So maybe when we do these informational meetings, I could put together a little cheat sheet mm -hmm. by town to kind of show what 
is the impact by that town so for good. the budget that was yeah. previously yeah. voted on. Um, and actually Dave Delcor brought it to my attention, so thank you Dave too, um, that that was part of it. Should make um, him an honorary board member. And yes. you know, the question that I was answering at the meeting was who would be paying for the $123 projected tax increase at the town of Callis. And so I did a little further research and you at town meeting had charts that showed the income sensitivity by town. And in Callis's case, I said it was over 50%. It was actually 63% of the town um, has income sensitivity. What is that for the other towns? I have it by town. Mm -hmm. I, I would put it together for you for the next okay. meeting so that we could, everyone is different. Yeah. Um, so for the example that I would use that I could come prepared to do by town, it would be um, who pays that $123 on a $100,000 house. Um, for the 63% of the Callis residents, how many wouldn't be paying, um, how many, how much are they really paying, right? So 24% would be capped at 5%, so they would not see a tax increase. 39% um, would be capped at around 2.8%. Um, so they would be paying like three dollars of the 123 tax increase, and then other people would be paying the full 123 dollars, as well as um, people who own land beyond the two acres. So I was going to do my typical, and I think Beers heard me do this when you had a budget vote on bonding, you know, kind of breaking it down into how does that really work for people, and if that would help, I would be happy to do that. So you're saying they would pay 123 dollars more per hundred. Thousand dollars, okay. and that's what we had reviewed at the last right. meeting. I just right. didn't have all this in my hand. And so, so, Alan sent you some an email trying to that it was proportional, and it really isn't proportional. Right. And so, Laura, I said I asked Laura today to mm -hmm. I said if you could kind of help correct because Alan's the way he was projecting right. tax rates, mm -hmm. and the way Lori, who has taught me a lot about tax rates. And the really nitty gritty of the calculation was like, you know, we need to make sure at least the board is very well educated that how this is really going to impact people via income sensitivity. And you're able to do that, break that like you did for Cal, so sixty percent mm -hmm. down for each of the towns. Right. Yep. And I could just yeah. put together a little chart. You could review it at your next meeting and yep. decide if it would be helpful for the informational meetings. Um, yeah. That's what I'm offering to do. If that's yes. your pleasure. Good. In, income sensitivity is one of these, you know, um, unseen mysteries and um, hidden secrets of the of the tax system. And anything that that contributes to clarifying and, and improving understanding is welcome. So. Okay. And I did get a um, notification from Janet Ansel's office. They're running calculations too. And so they would have the latest tax information. So I would want to double check my work with them because the legislature just ended and all the numbers changed, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's so that's the mistake. chart that we have on page um, nine will be somewhat different based on the closing of the legislature. Uh huh. It's actually, that's the one good thing about this. One of the few good things I can say is we have really solid numbers now. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so. I, I will say that Janet's last front porch forum posting. Uh -huh. indicates a $150 uh, increase without income sensitivity um, on a $200,000 house site. So she's dropped it even further. So I would be happy to confer with her numbers. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I just want to Thank you. have what's yeah. totally accurate. Mm -hmm. And if we could put that on the storage form in our office, I'd just like to see what she put in there. Mm -hmm. I don't remember because I don't think that was. But our office has a number. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. This was uh, thank at the end of session. Yeah. So, not too long ago. So, um, before we leave the uh, the communication plan, we have the 18th at 6:30. Mm -hmm. But uh, should we try to have a pro forma night before? Is that worth doing? Nobody ever shows up at 32. I mean, so Stephen. The night, the night before, we have an we have a supervisory union carousel meeting on the seventh. Mm -hmm. And you find the, 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 the night before the election. Oh, 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 the night before the election. I'm sorry. No, I'm no, no. Calling. It's okay. Yeah, my uh, apologies. The, the 24th row. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. It's a nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Engage. Comment from the audience. I don't think fun was really the word. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know if that's worth exploring. Um, it could be just, you know, wind up nobody showing up. But what is perhaps more to the point is, uh, again, once we have that meeting all together, to fan out into our towns and or to the people that we know, wherever they may be, and um, you know, and engage them on the budget, and at least try to get them to vote. I think that's going to be the, the huge thing for the election that brought us in. I think was you know less than six percent of registered voters actually turned out, and um, my concern is that with a budget in late June, um, when people have already been voting on budgets for, you know, there are a number of questions that, you know, why should I vote on another budget? And why should I vote on this particular budget? Um, and then there's, of course, the amendments to the Articles of Agreement that need explaining. And Chris will play a big part in that, since he is the driving force behind that. Well, I hope tomorrow we find out if he can be there on the 18th. <laughs> before we set that in stone. Yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Good. Um, yeah. Any other comments on? Um, Are we sending a unified front porch forum to, to invite everybody to this, to this meeting? And uh, answer, like, <coughs> so take advantage of that one post to say, you know, this is what is, what is happening. And yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll sort of do that as a warning of the meeting? Or? We can definitely do it as a warning of the meeting of the 18th. I, um, <clears throat> one of the things that I was jotting in my own notes here was, do you want a, almost an FAQ for this election? I, I frequently asked questions. You know, mm -hmm. Why are we having it? What's it? You know, and it, it's, it's some of the things that we've done in Berlin. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if there was someone that at least could, because you just did a nice job, Scott, of saying what some of the questions are. Mm for voters and if someone could just write down questions, I think something that we could quickly write to to say, here are the reasons for the election and what needs to go out. And then that can mm -hmm. as we've done in other elections, the board members are great to post those out. Ballots will go out when? Uh, as soon as they get them, we're hoping they'll have them by Friday because we're within the window. Wow. So we need to actually get some information out sooner than later for those people who are voting by absentee ballot and just don't have any idea what is going on. Yeah, yeah. And are more apt to vote no because they don't know what's going on. Exactly. That's the that's the real so problem. The default you, the default vote would be no. No. Yeah. So for those absentee ballots that are going to go out, I would rather see something posted more than just on front porch farm and yeah. definitely sooner than that. <coughs> do we want to do something like the Moyle South did and write a group letter to and the paper? The paper. <laughs> uh, so many people tell me they don't buy the paper and they don't get it online. I don't think the paper hits it hits some people, but I, I won't say that it won't hit anybody. Yeah. Well, then, I mean, forget the paper. Is there interest in making a group communique of some kind yeah. and speaking with one voice? That uh, there's definitely interest. The problem is, it would have to be coordinated out, and that is a um, that's something that we can only do in a in an open meeting. Um, well, I would say I would take a I, I would take a, a, a lesson from U32 board, where usually one person writes, and that's sent out, and everyone posts in their towns. I'm just to George I'm, and Scott. I'm thinking about what you guys usually do. Did yeah. U32? Yeah. But then, then that's a different sort of thing than um, than what I had sort of thought you were talking about. A, a coordinated letter to I, I I can certainly draft up something that and and share it around and and see you know see how it goes because what also happens at U32 is sometimes the individual board members will take it 
uh, and craft and, it and, and shape it, shape it and, and yeah. do different things. Um, so why don't we submit to you ideas of what we in our respective towns think our townspeople would like to see? That then could be consolidated and crafted into a board um, style front porch forum. Yeah, I, I can do that. I mean, yeah, if, there I, all, if you want, if I'm your focal point. If you're the focal point and you wanted to talk with me, you and I bounced it back between each other once or twice, and then okay. we hand it back out to everyone to post. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Because I, I agree with what you're saying, getting it out sooner. Yeah, than, yeah, yeah. And we can do some of those FAQs in there, Scott. Of you know, here's some good. topics of things you need to know. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Don't play that as to do for me. Okay. So, um, I, are we ready to uh, to move on? Are you feeling okay about at least some of this? So we we do have some actions. Yes, yes, I know. I see. We have um, the insurance. So yeah, I just I can speak quickly to the insurance, and we then we can go right down to actions if we want. So or, or we can do insurance and accept insurance bid in the same. Yeah, uh, yep, it, yep. It's just getting through those pieces in the actions. Sure. Um, so, uh, and Laurie, you help me here, but uh, on page, um, where's the insurance? Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Thank you. Um, and I have a handout that I didn't bring over with me. It's over there in the crate, and I'll get it if you so need it. Every year, the executive committee has been the one to award an insurance bid for the whole supervisory union. So for some of you who do have not sat on the executive committee, you may not have seen something like this. But we use Dennis, Ricker, and Brown to go out and do our bidding for us amongst multiple. Or you know how many agencies they try to pull from? They try to do with every agency that has a plus. And so Lori and Michelle did this great work of going out and collecting a bid for us. It uh, gives us incredible coverage. I think it's less than a 1% increase for this year, or about a 1% increase in cost. Um, it gives us a $10 million rider overall for coverage. But last year, for those of you who were part of the SU financial um, board monitoring report and risk analysis, we actually spent much time in that meeting. A year ago this past February going over the insurance and how we protect our your assets mm -hmm. and liabilities here in Washington Central so it's the same policy uh, updated for this year and we're recommending what you see on page 99 I'm giving you the very abridged version no that's that's great are these um, you've worked with these companies before oh yes yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's actually a savings of eleven thousand four hundred sixty-two dollars under budget. Yeah, so which just is getting to the nice. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. So, do we have a motion to accept the insurance bid as we'll stated? I'll second. Okay, Dorothy moved. Vera seconded. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, very good. Motion carries. So, um, we have, uh, we've already approved the first reading of the required policies. Uh, I'm, I'm, we've already, uh, sorry, let me just backtrack for a second. 3.8 VSBA dues, we've already talked about that, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, 3.9, we kind of had a, a, enough of a litigation update. So, and we've approved the first reading of required policies, and we've accepted the insurance bid. Now, in that sandwich, there's authorization for the superintendent to accept all state and federal grants. Um, I actually have a question about this bill. Is, yeah. this, is this vital to approve today? Yes, it is, because grants are due the end of this month, and some of them are being you signed one today for Kelly. Mm -hmm. And so we did deliberately put this here because um, Kelly and Jen are leading most of our federal grant applications, and if we don't have this authorization, we will be holding up summer work. Mm. And so this is something that's done at every supervisor. You did it super as a supervisory union back in March. Uh -huh. It's the exact same motion, which is you're authorizing the, the superintendent 
to accept all federal and state grants. Right. The only reason why I'm I'm just sort of hesitant, uh, you know, looking at the at the statute, yeah, the and, and having in mind just Dylan's rule having been beaten into my head. Um, there's a section that this is a, a school board power to apply for grants and may accept and expend grants or gifts. Um, with this power given to the board, does the board, can the board delegate this power and the statutory You do power? have for years and it's required under federal law that you do this, otherwise we cannot apply for your yearly federal and state grants that we do every year to the tune of over a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm to, to, to the final <clears throat> point, we would have to be writing those grants. No, you know the statute is very, uh, the procedures are very clear that the superintendent, I'm the signatory, yeah. mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. for the organization so that well, I can sign an accept. Why would that power be granted to the board but then by statute I have, must be I have, delegated? I have not gone to ever ask that question before. Yeah. I was breaking new ground every day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been one that for the past six years, the boards and, and this past March, this has been on since I've been here for 25 years. You know, yeah. it's so it's an annual thing, and it's just we just a need it, and we need it because procedure kind of thing. Yeah. Jen and Kelly, as I said, they're both leading this work. Mm -hmm. Cannot literally cannot apply without a date before the grants were submitted that this was approved by the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and um, the, the software won't wouldn't even allow me to submit if I if we didn't have the date. Yeah, that's. Uh, Good. I mean, um, I just, I'm just checking. No, no, no. It's um, fine. It's fine. Ask questions. And, and it would be good, you know, if there's just to, um, if some, if Chris Leopold has nothing to do someday and wants to, but this, okay, never mind. <laughs> not, not, um, not, not now. Yeah. Not, not now. <laughs> uh, exactly. Okay. So. Um, I'll make a motion. That to authorize the superintendent to accept all. I'll second that. Okay, floor moves to authorize the superintendent to accept all state and federal grants. George seconds. Any further discussion? None. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nobody's opposed, so the motion carries. All right, 4.4. .4. Meal prices for the 2019 to 2020 school year. Those are on page 100. Uh -huh. um, for the first five years of my work here in Washington Central, we increased the meal prices in alignment with the state and federal reimbursement rates. And it was increasing a quarter every year. Last year, we did not recommend any increase in meal prices mm -hmm. because the reimbursement wasn't changing. Lori, I did not ask you this, so you can, I, I meant to ask you this because we were prepping so fast, but I totally forgot. But I was assuming that reimbursement rates from the feds we're increasing as well. We yes. need to rise with them. One of the things in the statute, I asked her a very quick question because I knew she would know my code by being that brief with her, is that uh, since we receive to keep our reimbursement for free and reduced meals, we must charge students who are not covered by free and reduced uh, supports the same as the reimbursement rate for greater for the meal. Mm -hmm. So the reimbursement rate is right around four dollars and. We'd usually do it in 25 cent increments to keep it easy on the folks that are running the, the kitchens. Um, but we always do it right at the reimbursement rate. Mm. And then for the adults, we were increasing to try to get comparability and to cover the real cost of the meal. Mm -hmm. And so that work was done, I think, um, in consultation with the U32 Food Service Director and the Elementary Food Service Agents. That's great. So that was increasing as well. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Is, is the, the Doty adult breakfast at $5 just a typo? Um, it was in breakfast quarter. You're right. It yeah. could have been stayed the same. Yeah. So we should have that. The Doty adult breakfast is should be, the should most be expensive. Four. 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 It should be four. It should be in line with everyone else. A good catch, George. That was my yeah. bigger question. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. One yeah. budget, one quarter. It should be in alignment. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, George, for catching that. <clears throat> it is a heck of a spread, though. Probably worth five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? 
Lori, is, is there a budgetary impact to this? Um, well, when the expenses are going up, it's probably cost neutral. I don't think we're going to be making a big profit on okay. increasing prices <laughs> because meal costs. <laughs> 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 I assure you, you thirty. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, do we need to move to yeah, change we, the? We do need to move to adopt or, or, or amend or as amended. Or adopt. As amended, yeah. So do we have? Do we have a motion on the table to adopt meal prices for the 2019-2020 school year? Uh, I, I will move to uh, amend this to, for the Doty adult breakfast to be $4, not $5. $4, and would you move the whole package as amended? And then I would move the whole package as amended. Well, the other no number should be 375 instead of 475 That was wrong, too. Oh, yes. You're right. Thank right. you. Yes. So Jonas moves the package at the price package as amended. Any second? I'll second. There are seconds. Um, any further discussion? No? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> opposed? <coughs> None opposed, motion carries. Um, all right, 4.5, approve adding a student representative or representatives to this board. Um, any, uh, are, are there specific representatives in mind, or? Well, we um, know we no. would want to continue uh, Mia's, is it Dia Smith or Smith? Yeah. So That's why it's just Smith. I, so in, if you don't mind, before, we've, we have not spoken of anything. So um, one, of the, one of the things that I would think that the board should ask a question of is that um, first, one or two students, um, what we've done at U32 is that we had a junior and, uh, and a senior, and actually, so it was a two-year appointment for the junior, um, so that they that spent two years on the board, a new one came on. Um, but I would also ask you probably consider whether or not those student representatives can be related to a board member. Um, mm -hmm. It's, yeah, I, I think they're just considerations to make in this case. As, um, as long as they don't vote. Well. <laughs> Understood, but I, I no, just think I, that the board. No, you're right. That's that's. I'm glad you raised so that. So what I would say is, I mean, Stephen, do you need to know tonight, or can you wait till next week? Uh, I, I can wait. I mean, I'm I, just I, looking at the time and saying, I think, I think you bring up some good points, and they need the board needs time to talk about it a little bit. So would you like for me to just write up a few things for you as kind of along the lines of what we've yes. been doing? Because we we honestly didn't have a real written policy or, or procedure around it, so. I could write that up and then the board can consider it. Perfect. Is this, this is your daughter? This is my daughter, but you know, but I also don't know that they, you know, that, you know, I don't know, I know Stephen, you talked to her. I, I, don't, I don't know that she necessarily has to be. I, I know we haven't she's enjoyed it. We haven't approached it. Stephen, so Stephen, Stephen went faster than where I was going, but I was starting with who people were yeah. and, and to say that this is where we're at. So it, yeah. and she's currently in that role. Uh, the U32 board, board. She was our yes. junior representative. Could we grandfather that? No, no, you could. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I just, yeah, I think it's, I'll bring this. I'll think, bring a ride I think up. You might want some more discussion, yeah. and I'm not trying to say no to it. I just want you to be thoughtful as a board. Yeah. 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 And to think about, it. I'm in favor of a student, and I say that being in favor of student representatives being on the board. But I want you to have some discussion time, and we're already at 8:30. So. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Let's. Uh, I'll, I'll look forward to Stephen's. <laughs> Be happy. We're meeting. Up, so we're meeting regularly. So. That's right. Good. Excellent. Okay. So then, moving on to our last action agenda item: approving the telephone systems bid. So I'm going to try to do this short, but I could go a lot longer into this because this. And normally, Keith McMartin would be here as your technology uh, coordinator to present this to you, uh, but I learned this morning that today is a very important day in his household and that he should be husband and father instead of being here with us tonight due to family commitments. So he's there. But he did all the hard legwork to get you. You have the RFP in, in your, mm -hmm. and this is something that we've had a technology plan for six years that as you, for those of you who've been on the board know that we fund it in such a way so that we have big ticket items like a phone system the money is there to do it, and we're not borrowing money. 
So yeah. the money is there within the budgets. The schools that are, all the schools except for East Montpelier and Romney are having their phone systems replaced. And um, if you need to hear specifics of what's happening, I would turn that over to my colleagues. But I can tell you that you cannot buy parts from the manufacturer anymore to repair the systems we have placed in house. They're that old, they're 12 years old. We have been told by the companies that produce them, they will no longer, the company that produced it will no longer service it. Our local telephone service provider, Twin State, who said they will do the best they can. So it's my strong recommendation that you accept this bid of $99,997 to replace the phone systems at U32, the central office, Berlin, Callis, Doty this summer. Any discussion? I saw George with a knowing nod. <laughs> what are you doing, Graham? <laughs> it's only ninety-nine thousand dollars. I mean, as a business owner, you know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. about things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so close. It was updated and we did very conveniently the below first round of renovations because I thought they incorporated the clock timing and oh, it was the wiring. It's the wiring. It wasn't the phone it equipment. Wasn't the phone. It was the wiring to make you E nine hundred and eleven compliant, right? No, that was before that. Or but, you know, part of that. But it, they are, they're over 12 years old. And for a phone system, that is ancient. And this is in the multi-year capital right, that, 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 plan for technology. technology. So the budget's there. Mm -hmm. And it's been planned on for years. Mm -hmm. Just let you know. Yeah. No, you yeah. know. Great. And is this stuff mm -hmm. currently not functioning? Yes. Like, I could give you a very large open today. Yeah. I had a student meeting that was really critical for me to be a part of, yep. and it was in Morrisville. But as you can imagine, there's more than one student in my building that needs some attention. Yep. So it made more sense for me to call in to this meeting um, and stay in my building and be present for students. In order to do that, I had to shop around from office to office to find out which one has the line that doesn't have static and that I could read on the screen display, did I have the right line and the right person that I was talking to? And is it, was I ideally positioned within the room for um, the speaker to work? Uh, that it was a ridiculous amount of time. It, I, it's not like I'm getting millions of dollars, but if you multiply that by all of our buildings and all of our salaries, that's a lot of money. I get it. Um, is there another way around it? like a, a Skype kind of alternative or? We looked at outside hosting and it's not an alternative we can go to. We need to have an internal phone. Yep. Or, How and, much the PA system here is currently still not working. And would that be fixed with the new phone system? I don't know about that. I don't know. Building. I just don't have to. I didn't come prepared to answer that question. I'm not 100% sure, but considering. It's really down here yeah, I mean, for us anyway, it's our primary communication if there was an emergency, if there's any sort of issue. Um, so again, we're still trying to figure out the source of the problem. But uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the back end equipment is what has got to be replaced in this process. And I know that U32, it's you know, it's old stuff. And so if it's the same here at Berlin, yeah. it's it's that that's the part that integrates in with the PA system through the phone system and those servers are Jeff, Jeff Airy put this in and he because there was a, a cut at the cost when it was initially put in, bought in retro bought in retrofitted equipment to bring in. It was not new at the time. And this was eight years ago. So I mean it, it is at that point they're just yep. It's not something we can do for business. Money's there. What's the lifespan of the new system? Probably six to ten years. Yeah. And, and then that's accounted for in yeah. long term like planning. Plan. Plan. Yeah. 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 Um, so, for, so it take, it's not the other phone system come in before the rest because we have. When I asked, when I asked Keith today, he said East Montpelier is about three years old. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Romney was in such a state of disrepair they could not assure. Um, 911 compliance, and so they had to replace it this past year. Yeah. 
just to keep safety insured in the building. And we experienced that with a bus accident the year before, that the phone system couldn't ensure safety for communication purposes. We're coming to the end of year four. Year four. Year, year, okay. year. Um, these are great questions. I appreciate, you know, sort of a critical eye being turned on these things. That's very good. Um, any, any further discussion? We don't have a... Just one more, just one yeah. more question. Is there any protection in the contract or in the, the specs for the bid that if they solve wrong or if it breaks, if it, do we have yeah, limited we have, protection? We have, we have warranties and we have installations. Right. Usually in any contract. I can't say, Jonas, that I know it's in this contract, but we'll look at it before we sign it. Yeah, okay. Usually in most of our contracts, Michelle Supka in our office that does all our RFP and Lori and Keith, their, I trust their work that they look for that. I have not read it. Okay. But we'll make it sure that that's there before it's signed. Great. May I have a motion? Make a motion to yeah. approve the bids for the telephone system. Fleur moves. Second. Second. Dorothy seconds. Any further discussion? Questions? I didn't hear the action. Was there anything more specific about the motion you just approved? Approving the telephone system's okay. bid. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. None opposed? Motion carries. Do you so, need to give her the amount, or do you have the amount there, or do you have I, I think it's, it's in there. It's, it's in, in there. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you can just accept the bid. Yeah, it's yeah. in the packet. Okay. You know, you have it in the packet. Okay. So 5.0, future agenda <laughs> items. We got a lot of them. Yes. So I don't, does anybody want to add anything more? No? Okay, thank you. Um, summary of meeting. We covered a lot of ground. Next steps for board members, I think the most important is the budget, um, getting ready for the budget vote, budget communication, and amendments to articles. Um, and, and as a slightly secondary priority. Um, and then we have meetings lined up uh, so, any any questions? Anything unclear about what what's to come? So we only have meetings. The twelfth is our next meeting, and we have one the budget piece on the eighteenth. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just writing myself a lit uh, a note was to get a list out of what was developed tonight for meetings and what was talked about here at the meeting. Mm -hmm. So Scott, maybe when you and I meet, <clears throat> we, you and I can just review that and make sure that gets out to everyone, right. so people can. Get those in their calendars. Great. Okay. So we are or are not meeting on the 26th. Of the I need you to hold it tentatively. Okay. If the budget does not pass, you will need to meet. Yeah. Yeah. On the Great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, everybody okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll know where the meeting next Wednesday is. By Friday. By, by, by Friday. Friday, I'll have an email out to you. Stephen told me that it's it's open. I just want to talk to Scott about that. Sure. And so Matt and Stephen know who's in charge of setting up. <laughs> We're gonna arm wrestle. Yeah. Oh wow. If I'm gonna tap Debbie. Still come set up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank At least you're useful. You don't have to do it yourself. <laughs> okay. Very good. Cool. So if there is no if there are no further wisecracks, ensured by consensus. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you all.